think we're good. So okay. I'm going to hand over to Cathy, who's got a great talk about tips and tricks uh, of design for developers. Lower the bar, please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so hi, my name is Ekaterina Moraru. You can find me on uh, Twitter at Valika. Uh, I don't know if you've been to uh, Amit's talk. He, he talked about patterns in architecture. But similar to architecture, we also have patterns for uh, interface design. And I provided the, a link there if you... The slides are available on, on, on Twitter, so you can go uh, if you're interested in more because some of you asked about patterns. But in this talk, we're going to go even lower, <laughs> so even at uh, the core principle. Um, so there will be like the basics. So patterns are, are more advanced. Uh, maybe we can talk about that in the future, <laughs> but now we'll go ev even lower. Um, so principles are fundamental rules. And um, if you were to uh, apply just one principle in your day-to-day uh, -day interfaces, that would be consistency. So what consistency means, uh, if the user learns your interface once, he will know how to use it uh, in subsequent uh, usages. And that is uh, very important because uh, it's much faster for him to, to react. Uh, but if we're saying that we're designing a consistent interface, this doesn't mean that all the buttons need to be the same. Uh, there are several types of buttons. And uh, uh, it's very important to have a, a primary action on, on your screen. So the user needs to know what is the main thing you want him to do. And uh, uh, primary actions are usually uh, designed with most, more contrast and color. So uh, he, <laughs> he gets the points on uh, what you want him to do. And uh, uh, they should be like only one, one per screen. Uh, and this primary button needs to be very clear. So we should avoid things like yes or no or uh, read more or stuff like that. Users think in actions. They want to delete something or they want to add or to edit. So we should use verbs. Uh, we should not have like uh, long uh, buttons like... Uh, I mean, we could give context, but uh, verbs are more, uh, more efficient in terms of, uh, of uh, directing the, the, the action. And also, when we ask the questions, we should avoid like uh, double negatives or, or very abstract things. We should use a common language and make it very clear what, what, what we want them to, to do. Um, there has been a very big debate on where the button should be placed. Should it be placed on the left side or on the right side? And if we are developing a native application, it's much more easy because the uh, operating systems have uh, guidelines and style guides and they have a preference. But if you're designing for the web, on the web uh, the rules are not that uh, strict. So um, I just want to um, show you some... Um, some points of why you should pick one or another. So for example, on left align, it's very easy for the user to vertical scan. He can read the title or he can read the labels and if he finds the button at the end, he can just jump from the title to, to the action. But if you want the user to actually read the, the description text, he will make like a Z shape. So he will read the description and then <laughs> he will need to press the button. So uh, in this case, the position matters. Because, for example, if you're using left align, um, he will read the, the text, he will go to the primary, he will see the secondary, and he will need to go back. So it's a bit uh, uh, longer to, to, to react, like a millisecond or something, but can add up, or at least compared to, to the other uh, right aligned. Now, it also matters if uh, you're designing for large interfaces or small interfaces. If you are doing a mobile application, uh, it doesn't really matter if it's on the left side or on the right side because the, the width is very uh, uh, tight. Uh, there are some uh, interfaces that even put the buttons in the middle or the buttons are full width. But uh, when we are designing for web and now uh, as developers, we like to have like 8K uh, monitors if we can afford them. Um, uh, if you don't have columns, if you are applying a right align um, layout, the buttons can get separated from the context so the user might feel lost or not see the connection uh, between, between the actions. Well, so here again, uh, he will do like a, a nail shape. <clears throat> now, uh, I've talked about primary and secondary action. The thing is that 
uh, and regarding patterns, there are some patterns like like wizards where, where you have multiple steps and you need to go like next and, and, and previous. And if you're designing for someone uh, from Western culture, um, when we read books, we kind of go from, from right to left and we, we're switching pages. So, so that's why uh, next button uh, feel more natural to be placed um, on the right side. Uh, but even um, uh, when you're placing them, just make sure that uh, the primary action is on the edge. Edges are much more accessible <laughs> because they're coming, so, so don't place the primary action in, uh, in the middle of the screen. So again, you need to decide, do I have wizards in the interface, do I need to place them on the right? But if you place them on the right, place them everywhere. Don't, don't uh, switch the position depending on what uh, interface pattern you're applying. Okay, buttons uh, and colors in general. Um, it's very nice uh, that we can attribute some color meaning to the actions. And again, be very sensitive of your target. In Western cultures, red means danger and errors, but in Asia, uh, red means abundance and luck, <laughs> etc. So they have reversed the, the green and red. Um, but even if we can give like all, all the cultures, try to limit um, the palette in order to be more pleasing and uh, we can convey um, in other ways uh, 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 things like warnings and, and infos. And why it's important at least to have one, um, one color for dangerous action is that if you assure consistency across the interface and all your buttons are, are let's say, uh, gray and, and blue, when the user will see a red button, he will understand that that is a very important um, or, or, or it's something up with, with, with that action. And um, for destructive states, it's really important to ask for confirmation. So if you're doing something uh, that will affect the user, ask him to see if he didn't accidentally press that. Uh, and I know it's harder to implement the uh, undo the measure controls, but they could be very helpful for the user to feel in control and safe and know that he can uh, com come back to that. Okay. And uh, um, I know we talked about, a lot about buttons <laughs> we still can have, but there's another principle which is called uh, affordance. And affordance, um, the metaphor is like when you see a door, and if the door has a circular handle, you might know that you might need to, to switch the handle. Again, if the door uh, has like a, a, like a pull, you know that maybe you, you can pull it or you can push it, and that's why sometimes when the door does the reverse thing of what you're expecting, you might be a bit confused, you don't know what's the direction. Uh, the same uh, for this principle can be applied to links. So uh, for the people that have been for a long time on the web, uh, when they see something that is blue and it, that is underlined, they might think that, okay, that's a link, so, or at least I know that's a link. Um, so be very careful when applying um, blue to headers or, or things that are, are not linked. Um, in the past year, the designers uh, wanted to, to leave the, the old habits and maybe try to express themselves with colors. So uh, it's okay to have uh, links of other colors according to your, your color theme. Uh, but the most affordance based on your prior experience are, are blue and underlined. Same for buttons. Um, when you see a button, buttons usually have uh, the click state and you know that you need to be pressed. They have multiple states. So uh, in order to increase usability, they should be represented at 3D objects that have some shadows or that have some borders or that have some, some gradients. Uh, the flat trend uh, for the past years have lowered a bit the usability of, of the things because you don't know if that's just a container or it's actually a, a button. So ideally, they should have these affordances that can help the user know uh, what type of, um, of entity it's in the page. Uh, one of the questions is, okay, w w when we have an action, what do you, you, we use? Do we use buttons or do we use links? And uh, if maybe uh, it's more clear that you should not have buttons inside the text because maybe you'll have some uh, alignment things that the line height will get increased because the button don't have uh, the same 12 pixels or 16 pixels. 
this is not actually the way we should r uh, rational about them. Uh, buttons and links have been created for very specific purposes. So uh, you should use buttons when you, you would like to have an action. So something that changes inside the interface. You're adding an element or, or, or you're producing changes on the database or, or something like that. So actions. While if you're just navigating to other places, you should use uh, links. Okay. Um, Another principle is the proximity principle. So uh, objects that are closer together are perceived to be related. And this is a very uh, strong visual principle that you, we could use inside uh, the interfaces. So for example, if you would have a menu, if you just uh, put some um, entries more closely together, people will, um, will perceive them as related. But it's very important to, to actually be related, not just place them because they uh, visually look uh, nicer. And this is an example of uh, uh, how it was used to be done in, um, in Gmail for, uh, for an older version. Okay. Another uh, related principle is the similarity. So similarity states that um, that um, object sharing attribute are perceived to be related and we can um, force that using colors or shape or orientation. So if you would want to try to read this, let's say, uh, per lines, your brains will, will, be, will be harder for your brain because uh, he will naturally, the brain, <laughs> will naturally uh, try to put them in, um, in groups. Uh, and having this um, similarity and proximity principle in mind, there is an even stronger principle that is called the law of unity, which can override cues from this two principle. And actually, the thing is that if we are um, uh, linking uh, consecutive objects by lines or by borders or by background color, we can uh, suggest somehow that th they are related. Uh, and here is an example. So, for example, if you're in an activity stream, if you just separate with, with lines, uh, people will perceive this as an entry or that could be a, a logging form. Uh, just a note here is that we might be very tempted to use these borders and lines, but the more borders we use, the interface would look uh, more crowded. So in the past years, we've seen uh, a fallback instead of law of unity on, on the proximity. So the designs are more airy and they're using more white space and they're more, <laughs> more relaxed um, and just rely on the, on the proximity, not just on, on, this, um, on these cues. Okay, uh, choice paralysis, it's a principle that states that um, if you give the user lots of choices, they might not know which one is best for them. And uh, there's another law, which is called Hicks law, that states that uh, the time to make a decision increases with the number and complexity of choices. And what we can do about this is to try to limit the choices we are offering, offering to the user. Uh, to clearly mark what are the differences. We can apply this, for example, if in our software uh, there are multiple uh, download versions, uh, so we should not represent them uh, all the same. Um, be very clear. Actually, if we can limit just to two, and maybe if there are some advanced things, just put them aside. I know we want to show all the, <laughs> all the options we have, but uh, it's, it's better for them to, to get a recommendation and know exactly um, what we should expect them to, to pick from, from that. And uh, a similar uh, rule to this is the seven plus minus two rule. So uh, a century ago, uh, Miller did some experiments <laughs> I thought you were making pictures, so that's why I ignored you for a long time. <laughs> okay, uh, so Miller's rule. Uh, he was having a lot of uh, people and did research. He was giving them like lots of words and uh, tried to see uh, for the short term and long term memory how much, how many of those words uh, users remembered. And the average uh, at that time was like seven plus minus two words. Um, in theory, designers use this rule to always say that we should not never have more than more items in the menus, and all the websites should should have this uh, this limit. But researchers have um, uh, redone the research more recently, and uh, the value changed from a four plus minus one. Uh, 
there's no clear conclusion on how many items there should be. The, the point is to have as few in order to, to be as easy, as easy to, be, to be used. Okay, and uh, there's a principle that is called serial position effect. Uh, if you think, let's say, at, at the alphabet, you know uh, that it starts with A and, and then ends with the Z, but you don't actually, I mean, maybe you do, <laughs> but some of us have trouble remembering exactly what's inside the, the, the sequence. And um, this principle can be uh, correlated with chunking. So, for example, if you would need to have like uh, nine items in a navigation, um, in a navigation bar, you could split them in groups of, of three, and this way you will have a first and the last for each of the groups and they will be easier to scan and e easier to remember and, and also uh, they should be correlated <laughs> and related not just uh, not just pl placed there and uh, chunking is actually very useful also for form elements so I don't know if you have have a card number you should chunk them uh, people when they are trying to remember their phone um, number they are uh, usually splitting in uh, sequences of two or three um, so uh, it's much easier for, for the user to, to know exactly what information uh, they should enter. And um, uh, regarding uh, easiness, for example, here it's an example with a zip code. But uh, uh, the most classical example, uh, it's when you enter the, the card details, when you do a payment. And if a user sees uh, an input of uh, three digits, he might know that that's the CVS that he needs to take from the back of the card. So um, it will be much easier for, for them to fill the, the form. Um, here, if you place the labels on top, again, it will help with visu visual uh, vertical scanning. Um, highlight and explain the error in the context. Some applications have a, a generic uh, a zone where they place the, the error message, and it's much easier to implement like that or with alerts or, or with toasts. But uh, for the user, it's much more clear exactly where he did the, the mistakes and uh, also provide a hint of uh, what, uh, what he should fix. And um, if we are using some uh, white inputs on something that, is, that has a light background, like it's here, um, the user will have triggered, uh, the co he will want to fill in the blanks. So if he sees something white, then uh, he, he would like to, to, to fill it. And that's how you can increase maybe uh, some forms that have some uh, optional fields. Okay. Um, I've seen a lot of times when we have numbers that they are uh, left aligned or centered and the rule is to have them uh, right aligned because if you have um, decimals and hundreds it's much easier to compare from one to another and this exclusively, not exclusively, but it's even more important on tables when you have quantitative data. So uh, you can then apply them to, to currency or even to, to date and make sure that the, the dates have the same format. So it's easy to scan months and, uh, and, um, and the days. And uh, here I've uh, also used uh, easy to digest the date format because uh, we don't want to see those long uh, <laughs> formats that uh, we usually see in, in our interfaces. Um, icons are very important, but try to remember that icons are not universal. Uh, people might look at this icon and think that it's a search, but it could also be a zoom because uh, uh, maps used it too, or they could think it's a ping pong paddle and it has been <laughs> tested in some research on, on this. So it depends on your previous, uh, previous knowledge with, with icons, you might understand them differently. But uh, Icons help instead of just having the, the, the names. The first time you will see them, you will not know what exactly that icon means. But on subsequent uses, you will understand that that means, I don't know, uh, recent tabs or downloads. And uh, you will just jump at it, recognizing the icons and not needing to, to read the, the text. Okay, <laughs> I know I've went very fast. <laughs> uh, and there are uh, two books I can recommend if you want to uh, learn more uh, principles of design and uh, the refactoring, uh, it's more of tips and tricks uh, fr from a um, uh, designer point of view. Uh, okay, 
the slides are also on, on Twitter. So if you have any questions. We have 30 seconds. <laughs> we have like, time for a couple of questions because we've got lots of people outside and we need to do the whole turnover. Okay. Yeah, yeah I have questions. probably a co controversial question. So yes. I use uh, Sphinx documentation for my open source project. Okay. And so I'm using the default template. Okay. And it's, I'm pretty sure like a lot of people who put some effort on doing it really like the most generic nice template. But I feel something is definitely wrong with it. And as a developer, I cannot say like what's wrong with it, but I would like to get it fixed somehow because like a big team is using the same template for documentation. Like, could you make any comment? So in general, uh, open source projects tend to do generic things and things that are scalable and uh, the base for, for theming. So this is not necessarily wrong, but uh, you can do customizations on top, right? And my suggestion is identify what's the problem. You, you can do that by asking a designer or uh, ask, actually asking other people what they think it's wrong with it, because I don't know <laughs> what is wrong. Yeah. You can make a pull request and try to fix it or just uh, do a theming for it. And theming uh, can be diverse because we all have different uh, purposes. So it might work, uh, I don't know, for for the not dark mode or, uh, but theming should be supported in mostly because there are people that are color blind and uh, yeah. ideally, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yes? Somewhere down there, if you can project, is there a difference in patterns recommended to be used, for example, in various uh, industry applications, for example, a specific set of patterns in uh, medical industry application, or a specific type of patterns in games? Is there a difference between those categories? Or is just that uh, used easily because it will create a habit and everyone will use it? But Yes. Okay, so the question is that there are different patterns for, for different industries and this is kind of hard to respond. The thing is that there are common things that all humans will understand and will perceive in even psychological uh, principles. Uh, it's very important to know your target. I mean, if, you, if your target are children or, or people under 10 years old, you will apply some patterns compared to some someone in pharmace pharmaceutical industry or I don't know. So yes, industry come with some patterns, but they're not, um, you, you will not find a website that will list them on, on domains. On the web, we will have, have patterns like, I don't know, wizards and how the search results should look like, but uh, yeah. Are there any open source solutions those? I don't know any of them, but I would be very interesting to know if there are. Yeah, so, so like we have the good patterns, there's this other category that are called dark patterns. And yes, uh, th there are a lot of research and people that are trying to, to combat this. Uh, they're usually um, taking advantage of in, in advertising and making people sell or, or buy things that they don't want or book things. Uh, but that's not ethical. Then any good designer would not want to apply those patterns. But yeah. You, you cannot force somebody to, to apply them or not, but they, they shouldn't. It's not recommended, yet. I have a question. So, like, I've seen that Hicks law being abused so badly. The what? Hicks law. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Being abused, like, to sell me service providers, like, so hosting companies. Or, like, but do designers take an ethical standpoint, like, oh, I've got four options. I'm going to highlight this. <laughs> So ideally, you should highlight it because you you will help the user, but uh, depends on your purposes. I mean, if you know how to manipulate these rules, yes, you can propose something in, uh, that is not beneficial to the user, but this uh, depends on the moral values of the designer. So, yeah, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Yes. Th thank you so much for coming.